So chapter 16 is chemical equilibrium. So the speed of the reaction is determined by kinetics. And that's what we have been talking about in the previous chapter is how fast is this going to go and how does the speed change with these other factors. The extent of a reaction, how far it goes, is governed by thermodynamics. The equilibrium constant, which has a symbol capital K, is an experimentally measurable quantity used to quantify how far a reaction goes. Because unlike you may have been led to believe in Chem 3A and maybe even in Chem 1A, reactions do not always go to completion. In fact, they usually do not go all the way to completion. We use that pizza making example in 1A for limiting reactant and stuff. And so this is like, you know, you set out to make 100 pizzas, but after about 75, you decided to quit because you just didn't feel like making anymore. And so chemical reactions are like that. They do not always go as far as they can go. So this equilibrium constant tells us how far it goes. If the K is very large, then the reaction favors the products and it goes mostly towards completion. If K is small, less than one, it favors the reactants and maybe only a little bit of this reacts. So in chapter 19, we will look at some reasons for the magnitude of the equilibrium constants, but for now we're just going to look at what they are and what they mean. So the book introduces this topic um, with a discussion of hemoglobin, which um, should be interesting to all of us because it's one of the things that's keeping us alive. So your red blood cells have a protein called hemoglobin, which is often abbreviated HB, and that reacts with oxygen. So the hemoglobin reacts with the oxygen, basically picking up the oxygen and becoming this complex. And this is a representation of the hemoglobin. Um, you can't just really look at its formula or something because it's just like thousands, I think, of, of carbon atoms and stuff. But it has these four sites where the oxygen um, binds in. The double arrow here tells us that this reaction goes in both directions. It's a chemical equilibrium. The concentrations of the reactants and the products here are described by that equilibrium constant. Is it going to be more of the product where the hemoglobin is holding the oxygen, or is it going to be more of the oxygen that's free and the hemoglobin that's ready to pick up more oxygen? So an equilibrium system is going to respond to changes in ways that maintain the equilibrium. Um, so if we have less oxygen present, then the reaction's going to go in the reverse and the hemoglobin will release oxygen. If we have more oxygen present, the hemoglobin is going to pick up the oxygen and the reaction will go in the forward direction. It's a little bit like a balance. So the hemoglobin transport ox transports oxygens from your lungs to all the parts of your body that use oxygen. So in your lungs, there's high oxygen concentration, relatively speaking, because the air is coming in and the air contains oxygen. And so the hemoglobin will bind to the oxygen and the reaction goes towards the right. We make a lot of hemoglobin carrying the oxygen. Then the blood moves along and as it goes through tissues where the oxygen concentration is low, then the reaction shifts to the left and this hemoglobin carrying oxygen releases the oxygen. And so it's transporting oxygen from your lungs to the various parts of your body. Now the first, you know, the first tissues that the, the blood goes to probably already have oxygen from the blood that just went through them. And so the hemoglobin may just hold onto it until it gets further along. Any questions? It is cool, yeah. Mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. slow. Exactly. Ah, okay. It's a lot like a seesaw. Okay. Yep. <coughs> you ever wondered how does an unborn baby get oxygen? 
Because, yeah, through the placenta, but exactly how does that work? Because the mom's blood doesn't mix with the baby's blood. And the mom's breathing, so the mom has oxygen in her blood, but then how does the oxygen get into the baby's blood? Well, babies have a special kind of hemoglobin called fetal hemoglobin, <coughs> so that's abbreviated HBF, and this has a larger equilibrium constant. And so this goes more towards the right, the forward direction of the hemoglobin grabbing the oxygen. So in the placenta, you have um, fetal arteries and veins that are in very close proximity to the maternal um, <coughs> arteries and veins. And so the oxygenated blood from the mother comes very close to the oxygen-deprived blood of the baby. And the oxygen can diffuse through these cell walls. And so as the high concentration or the oxygen with the mother's hemoglobin carrying the oxygen comes through and there's a low concentration of oxygen around it, it releases its oxygen. The fetal hemoglobin grabs that up and transports it around where the baby needs it. So it's really, really cool. The oxygen gets transported, but the mother's blood doesn't mix with the fetal blood. Cool, huh? It's equilibrium, and it's equilibrium constants. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Can you talk about a large pain, a small pain? Mm -hmm. Will it be labeled as smart, large pain, small pain? Um, we'll, we'll see in a minute. When we say large, often it's like you know 10 to the 25th, and small might be 10 to the minus 20. Oh, so there is a, is a big and small. Right, so yeah. It's not like capital. You not mean like capital. No, I meaning okay. magnitude. Okay. Magnitude. Yeah. I didn't get what you were asking at first. Yep, yeah, that's a valid question. <laughs>